Morning everyone, Jason Sullivan here, coming to you from the University of North Alabama. I wanted to make a video response from an email I got from Rod, uh, asking me about ways that I work my low register, trying to get uh, notes to speak a little more evenly uh, and consistently down as I go uh, low. So here's a, one thing that I do. I have a video that's posted about uh, doing broken intervals and kind of working in towards the upper register. For example, if I took major seconds, and I alternated the direction that I go, as a way to work towards the upper register, what I do is just straight intervals without the, uh, the jagged disjunct pattern. Uh, when I go to the low register, I find that uh, I run out of breath too quickly and so I'm not con able to connect a large enough range. A couple of the factors to keep in mind is that it's one thing to be able to pop low notes out on their own, but it's another thing to be able to connect down to that range. See right there, there's a considerable shift for me to get down to the low C. So here's a way that I would work on it. As always, I wanna make sure that I'm nice and open, I have reasonable posture, so I like to do a lot of my practice standing on a wobble board. Uh, and again, I have a video, I'll try to post a link about that you can check that out, but uh, this video is just more about the intervals working down. So what I'll do is I'll get nice and comfortable balancing on the, uh, on the wobble board here. And then let's just start with something like uh, we'll just do half steps. Just a nice even tone, not forcing, not pushing. Remember that the low register, it's slower frequency vibrations, it's slower sounds. I don't even like to call them high notes and low notes, I call them fast notes and slow notes. And the slow notes, we have to think about really allowing the sound to move very slowly. A lot of times when we try really hard to take a big breath and support a lot of air into the low register, we're just blowing the air too fast. So we really have to slow down and put the brakes on when we go down there. So I'm just going to do this little five note pattern on minor seconds. And I'm just going to keep working my way down and as you get more comfortable and more capable you just go a little lower, a little lower, a little lower. And then the other thing you can do is you can turn it into a six note pattern or a seven note pattern. Let's do, uh, let's fast forward and pretend a month later I'm now doing eight note patterns. I want to try to keep the sound nice and consistent all the way down. So now I might do something like major seconds. So usually down in the D, D flat, sometimes E flat range, there's a shift that I have to do. I know it's there, but I don't want to think about it consciously. I'd rather just do little exercises like this and slowly over time, my face will figure out what it needs to do to shift very seamlessly, seamlessly and very fluidly as I work down into the low register. I'm not going to overthink it. Let the face figure it out. and I could keep working down, 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 down. So then maybe minor thirds. The other thing that happens is that you're learning your intervals as well. And uh, in contemporary harmonies and contemporary composition, it's really important. The bass drum is primarily a contemporary instrument. We can steal from other genres or other time periods, but the, most of the music, most of the repertoire that's been written for this instrument is written in contemporary style. So there are going to be a lot of things like stacked perfect fourths or diminished or augmented. Uh, so it's helpful to learn these intervals. Obviously the major seconds it essentially makes a whole tone scale. The minor seconds is a chromatic scale, but the minor thirds is a diminished arpeggio.
might start a little higher, actually. just trying to smooth it out. Then I'll go to major thirds. So what happens when you do patterns like this? First off, if you take five notes, you can pretty much manage that on one breath, and you have to do it on one breath. The second that you open up your mouth and take a breath, you're essentially giving yourself an opportunity to reset, even if you think you're gonna try really hard to keep it in the same place. Um, we unconsciously or subconsciously will just kind of reset things to make the embouchure a little more favorable for what we need to do, but then what we're doing is we're training up like an additional setting for the low register that we can't uh, toggle back and forth very evenly uh, and very easily. and, and really to develop facility in the low register, we need to make sure that we're using whatever kind of setting uh, is easy to kind of transition down to without a whole lot of shifting. Because if you have to do a major shift, then you're going to experience somewhere in the repertoire where you don't have time to do it, and then you can't play that lick. Uh, for example, the Spillman uh, Concerto has that, uh, there's, a, there's a lick that goes pedal F and then goes up from there in an arpeggiated manner. And it gets faster and faster, and on the last one, it's very tough for people to do if they have to shift to get down to that pedal F. So you have to work it up in a different kind of way. So you do these intervals. Uh, you can go as large as you want. You can get up to perfect fourths, tritones, perfect fifths, minor sixths. Keep going up to octaves if you want. Just going for a very smooth and consistent tone. Add notes as needed descend as needed. Just remember to stay relaxed. The sound is much slower when you go in the low register and just try to keep as even and consistent of a tone as possible. When you feel like you've got a reasonable level of comfort with slurring all the way down to the low register, then go back and do the same thing with a tenuto articulation. Uh, adding the tongue is a whole other degree of freedom. It, it's a whole other set of variables. So I tend to do that after I've got a reasonable handle on the smooth and connected approach. But then you go back and you add the articulation and get creative with uh, different ways to do it. So hopefully that's helpful to you. Uh, feel free to comment below uh, if you're trying this out and you have further suggestions or comments. Thanks for watching.